Today I'd just like to reflect shortly upon the part of the blessing which says, May your whole spirit, soul, and body. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Going over this part of the verse of our blessing, um, there was a lot of questioning. I, I didn't really know what to relate it to. What a blessing Paul wishes upon the Thessalonian people. At the very end of that phrase, it gives me hope to know that Jesus is coming again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it goes a little more into detail and tells us about what will take place when he comes again. It talks about how the dead in Christ will rise up and be resurrected and caught up in the air. And how those, the righteous who are still alive, will be caught up together there in the air. Oh, what a reunion that will be. But it also talks about a change that happens at the, at the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The perishable will put on imperishable how the mortal will put on immortality. And this change will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye when he comes again. But this change is just an external change, an outward change, a physical change. But according to the blessing that Paul records in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body in Jesus we can find complete change. Like, what does this really mean? What does it mean to be kept blameless if Jesus Christ has already made us blameless? I was confused, and after a lot of thought and prayer, the story of Daniel came up. In the story of Daniel, in the very beginning, Daniel and his friends are getting trained and prepared by the the people in Babylon who are making them officials and training them and things like that. When they go to eat, Daniel feels called to pretty much tell the people like, I can't really eat meat like that. Like I can't do this kind of things. Like I, there's specific things that I need to eat. And everyone thought this was so weird and so strange. Like why would that like, you're not getting nutrients. Like what's wrong with you? But when you think about it, He's doing something that's different than the others. Doing this that he's set aside, him and his friends are different from all the other like captives and people that they're training in order to be part of Babylon. And this is something that continues on. And after 10 days, there's progress. It's like seen and it's clear and it's evident that Daniel and his friends have this the strength and this endurance and this this these qualities that not the other people have they stand out from the other people and that's something that just like blew my mind but then it was also something that i've seen in my own life my very first job was working in fast food it was awful it was gross i hated it but one of the things that was very specific when I first started my job was I can't work on the Sabbath. I can't work on Friday night and I can't work on Saturday. And this was something that was difficult for my manager to, you know, make the schedule and things like that. But thankfully, like, he complied and it was, it was nice and things like that. Um, so me and my friends were all working there together and we were like, yeah, we can't work on Sabbath. And all of a sudden, like, he's like, you guys are like really good workers. Like, I don't know what about like you guys not working on Sabbath, but you guys are really great workers. And if you have any of your friends that you want to recruit to work here, like that'd be great. And all of us were kind of like shook by that. We were like, wow, that's, that's kind of crazy. Like we're set apart from the other people. In Jesus, we can find not just an external change when he comes again, but an internal change. So when does this internal change need to happen. And that's something that we can make that choice. We can be set apart and make our whole entire entity and sacrifice that and give it up to God. You know, as a Seventh day Adventist Christian, in my own experience, it has been easy for me to profess that I am a Christian, but it's been a process, it's been a day by day journey with God to become Christ like you know this change that happens internally needs to happen now before he comes again while we are still 
a part of this community, while we are still a part of this world, this internal change needs to happen now. You know, Paul in the earlier verses in chapter 5 of Thessalonians tells us that we are to be the sons and daughters of light. That it's when we allow the light, Jesus, to come and shine in the dark areas of our hearts and shine in the dark areas of our lives is when we allow that internal change to happen. But what's so beautiful about this change is that when it happens internally, we begin to be a light externally for him. We become the change in our homes. We become the change in our community. We become the change in this world. So I encourage you today to be the change. God wants to come in and shine his light not only in the dark spots of your life, but he wants to shine through you and use you so that you can be a light in this world of darkness. And he will make us blameless. He will help us show others him. Be the change. Blessings.